It's time to fire this thing up. Well, good deal you made it. Hi, I'm John Graviscus. It's great to have you back aboard the boat. What I'm on is a very special fishing boat. It's 39 foot in length. And what they do here, this is a nonprofit ministry where they bring inner city kids and lower income people that have never had the opportunity or the experience to go out into the Atlantic Ocean and catch fish. And what's really cool about it is they never charge a penny for any of these services. It's all complimentary, it's all based on donations. And I would like to introduce you real quick to the captain. This is Captain Tony. John, my and, and Tony, what make is this boat and what year was it built in? The good news is a uh, 1984 Spencer walk-around fisherman, twin diesel. All right, and you, you operate solely on people giving you contributions and stuff like that. And we want to try to help today too. What area of the boat are you really having an issue with today? Our main issue is the deck. The deck is kind of slick, and when we get any fish blood on there or any type of fish on the deck, it becomes very slippery, and it's very challenging for the crew and the children not to slip on the deck. So uh, any type of uh, non-skid application would be very advantageous to us. I've been looking around the boat, and I've also seen some cracking. It appears to me that the original paint for this deck is an epoxy type of uh, product that does turn brittle. And what we want to do to kind of help out the cause is we would like to redo your deck for you using a product called Tuff Coat. Now what's so cool about this is not only does it give you incredible non-skid, but it's very comfortable to walk on. It's not like sand or anything like that. And it's actually green. You know, they're, they're making it from ground up tires, keeping them out of landfill, and that's how you get your traction. It's water-based, so it's not going to hurt anything. It's very good for the environment. But not only are we going to show you how to redo a deck, especially if you have spider crack issues, and a lot of us boaters do, but we're also going to get around the dock. A lot of people have pressure-treated lumber where it has started to disintegrate. Really, it's costly to remove it and to replace it. We're going to show you how this tough coat can actually work on docks as well. Ship Shape TV will be right back. Welcome back. We are trying to add some traction to a fishing boat that is kind of a nonprofit organization. They take a lot of kids that have never been fishing before out into the ocean. And we want to kind of give them some stability, give them some confidence when they're out there because not everybody's really sure footed. And that leads us to our next guest who's right over here. This is Bill Duffel. And Bill is the owner of a company called Puff Coat Marine. Had you up at the house in the Adirondacks a couple of years ago, and we had a pontoon boat that we wanted to put some traction on, and we decided to go with your tough coat. And I think we even selected this color right here. And Captain Tony was telling me about, you know, a lot of these kids from the inner city, a lot of these uh, people have never been on a boat before, they've never fished before, and the current deck is very slippery. Even if it just rains, it, it gets slippery. You don't have to have fish blood on it or anything like that. And I was kind of recalling what we did on the pontoon boat, and I said, man, I think there's an awesome product that could really address those issues. We've also had other project boats built where we have put on these two-part marine paints, you know, where you add the catalyst and you add the reducer, and you can either suspend a non-skid agent, like, like silica sand, into the paint, or you can sprinkle it over top of the paint. But paint on its own is really, really super slick, is it not? You bet. Okay, so if you don't add that silica sand, you're not going to really get the traction. But I've also taken a look at my own boats that have had this approach done to it, Bill. And over time, it kind of seems like I can never get the deck uniform in color anymore. It's kind of like that sand's popping through the paint. Is, is that, in fact, happening? Yeah, that's exactly what's happening. The sand is abrasive and sharp. So over time, it's going to pop through the paint. It's going to deteriorate the paint and leave little holes where the sand was, it's going to pop out or crush. Well, you know, there's a fishing boat, a charter boat, right next to the Good News boat, and I was looking at the topside gunnels, man, and you talk about paint and non-skid wearing away. You know, these guys are washing it and cleaning all the fish off and everything. It does kind of wear away. How is this tough coat different 
than marine paint with silica sand as non-skid kind of mixed into it because this this gives you incredible traction. What is the material made from? Uh, this material is a it's a polyurethane, water-based polyurethane, which we put rubber granules in. So the rubber actually goes all the way through the product. Okay, that's uh, what this is right here. These are these are rubber granules, and is this raw virgin rubber, or are you doing anything environmental here? Uh, it's recycled rubber we buy from the factories and have it ground our specs. Okay, and this over here, what, what is this, old tires that, that didn't go into a landfill? Yeah, we use recycled tires and have them ground, and we put them in our darker colors. Okay, so, so marine paint, that option, has uh, multiple components. You, you, you've got the paint base, you've got the catalyst, you've got reducers. How, how many parts make up tough coat? And are there a lot of VOCs that come out of this when you apply it? Uh, Tough Coat is a single component, uh, which we do put the rubber granules in. So it's got, uh, uh, everything is in the can when you buy it. There's zero VOCs. It's all water-based. There's no, no ki nasty chemicals in it. This is a water-based product. You bet. It's okay. eco-friendly. Now, you and I were looking at the condition of the deck, and we saw some spider cracking into that epoxy paint. And my question here is, could we fill some holes? Could we fill some cracks with the Tough Coat? Because this stuff seems to be pretty thick. You bet. It's a nice thick material. It goes down about 30 mils and it'll cover spider cracks and, and slight imperfections in the gel coat. Okay, so this is really going to save us on a lot of labor, a lot of, a lot of work here. And it's flexible, so as the spider cracks move again, it won't crack again. Okay, now, now gel coat isn't the most flexible product out there. That's maybe why we're getting some spider cracks. And I know on epoxy paints, those can sometimes not be that flexible. And maybe as the boat's flexing, maybe that's why we're getting some cracking. But I just kind of really bent this stuff up, and it really comes back to life. It doesn't, it doesn't do any cracking at all. Now, is there any type of product, Bill, that we have to use to, to, to get the tough coat to stick to the deck? Yeah, you want to use our water-based primer. This is our CP10. You apply the primer down to the deck first. Wait about four hours and you can apply the tough coat to the top of it. How many different colors does this tough coat come in? And, and also, what did Captain Tony select? Uh, it comes in 21 different colors. Captain Tony selected the light gray, complements his boat well. It's a light color, so it'll stay a lot cooler. Okay. Now, I see that this gives us incredible traction, but it's also very comfortable. This isn't going to hurt your knee. This isn't going to hurt your bare foot. H how much is tough coat compared to marine paint? Uh, it's about $1.60 a square foot to purchase the material and apply it yourself. Okay, so it's very reasonably priced. You bet. Where could somebody get this? Uh, go to toughcoatmarine.com. Awesome. Well, right now we need to take a very short time out, but keep it right here because when we come back, let's take everybody step by step of how we're going to transform this good news fishing ministry boat into a non-skid type of material that's going to be user-friendly for the kids that go out into the ocean. We'll cover it right after this. Welcome back. You're tuned into ShipShape TV, America's favorite boat improvement show. This is the non-skid material that we selected to kind of transform the deck on a 39-foot fishing boat today here at ShipShape TV. And we again have the privilege of having Bill Duffel on the program. And Bill is the owner of Tough Coat Marine, and you're so welcome, sir. Where do we begin in actually doing this project? You want to make sure the deck is clean and free of any dirt and grease or oil. So we want to use some biodegradable soap, boat soap, some water, and we want to scrub that deck real you good. You bet. Okay. Now, do we need to dry the deck? You need the deck to be dry because your next step is going to be taping and sanding. You know, I was kind of seeing where the inside is splatter painted coming down to the gray deck. And there's a defining line. There's a decorative border going around a lot of the areas of the boat. And I'm thinking we can mask that off with some three inch wide masking tape. And the reason I'm going so wide here, Bill, is some of those radiuses, what we could do is we actually cover them with the masking tape and then we could come back with a razor blade and we could actually save a lot of time and effort in the taping process. But we do have quite a bit of masking to do around the boat. And also we're gonna be rolling on the tough coat, Bill. And I don't want any of the tough coat splashing up on the inside of the boat. I wanna cover that splatter painting with some type of either masking plastic or masking paper. But I'm thinking here, we, we've got to give the material something to bite into. How can we get Tough Coat to kind of bite into an existed painted deck? What you want to do is take a, about 100 grit sandpaper and you want to scuff the surface. You want to, you want to give it a profile. 
And what we also use is a sanding pole. The sanding pole makes it easier. Uh, you can stand up and sand as opposed to being on your hands and knees. How much of this paint do we have to remove? Are we trying to get rid of all the paint or what? No, you're just trying to scratch it and scuff it. Okay, now we want to naturally make sure that we vacuum up any dust. We don't want it going into the water. But we're also going to have to wipe down the deck of any little tiny debris. And can I use acetone? Can I use denatured alcohol or what? You don't want to use any solvents. You just want to use plain water okay. and then dry it. Very good. So we've got it sanded. We've got everything kind of masked off. You were talking about a special primer that we needed to, to use to try to get the tough coat to really bite into the deck. What's that called again, and how do we mix it? It's our CP10 primer. It comes in uh, two gallon cans, half full. You would just dump one can into the other, stir it, then you would apply it with any 3 8 nap roller. OK. Now, how long does it take to cure? It takes about four hours to cure. You want to wait at least four hours, but no longer than three days. OK, I want everybody to take a look at this five-gallon bucket right here. Now, this, again, has the rubberized granules in it. That's the non-skid properties, and they can sometimes sink. So with a paddle wheel, we do want to resuspend all of that material into the mixture. But is there a special type of roller that we use to apply the tough coat? Because again, we have rubberized granules in it. Yeah, you want to use one of our tough coat rollers. It's made with an open cell pattern to it, which actually takes the rubber granules and disperses them onto the surface. We had some spider cracking issues into the deck on that boat. We also had some holes. Could we mix up some additional tough coat and could we kind of pour it into those areas very thick in order to not have to do any uh, grinding or any type of a repair that way. You bet, and it'll put it down thicker and it'll self-level if you poured it down in those little areas. What's the ideal amount of coats to put on a boat? Is it, is it one coat, is it two coats? It's two coats. Two coats, can yeah. you go more if you wanted to? You can go more. Very good. Again, how do people get Tough Coat? You go to toughcoatmarine.com. Hey, um, we are now in our 21-foot Seabird project boat, and I want you to take a look at the non-skid on this. This was painted with the silica thrown in, and we probably have four or five years of wear on this deck, and you can see that it is kind of uh, popping through the paint, but it is wonderful non-skid. There are a few ways to non-skid the boat. Uh, this is one of them, but we showed you a product today called Tough Coat, and I want you to take a look at the Good News fishing boat before we did anything, okay? It was slick and the inner city kids, the military guys that they take out, people coming back from war, you know, they take a lot of people out into the ocean for free in order to kind of turn them on to our world, which I think is so awesome. But now here's the result of putting the tough coat. Here's the after, and I gotta tell you, these guys are gonna have traction, they're gonna have confidence when they're walking around. Introducing boating's number one non-skid, Tough Coat Marine by Tough Coat, the ultimate in rubberized non-skid. Perfect for flawed boat decks and weather dock or deck treads. Do-it-yourselfers rejoice. This water-based decking material runs ballpark just a buck sixty per square and can be rolled or sprayed onto decks and docks that need traction and beautification. Hide seams, flaws, and cracks fast with the number one recycled rubberized non-skid on the market. 18 colors, including whale or blue, to choose from. Find Tough Coat Marine at these retailers or go to toughcoatmarine.com.